and Rose. Stealing Rose. Stealing Rose. Bringing you entertaining and inspiring guests. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another edition of the world famous and world renowned Stephen Brown Show. A bit of a change of gears because tonight's show we have Mr Jeremy Corbyn. Thank you so much for joining us on the show. Stephen, thank you for inviting me. Lovely to see you. How's your time in Glasgow been so far? Wonderful. I've been uh, meeting shipyard workers this morning and then later on today we had a very good discussion with a lot of people working in the catering industry the appalling conditions that are on, the very low levels of wages, and I was supporting the uh, charter for good employment practices in hotel and catering, and uh, att- attended a union branch meeting, which was huge, very very high-spirited, very determined to get decent living conditions, making sure everybody gets their tips paid to them, not to somebody else, safe travel home, for workers after midnight and an end to any bullying harassment of people at the workplace. It was a really instructive and very useful day for me. I learnt a lot. Automation is going to change the face of British working life over the next 10 to 20 years. Many of the old industrial retail administrative jobs that we relied on will not exist in the future. What is Labour's vision for the future of British industry and jobs? Well, first of all, recognising that high technology changes are going to happen and we shouldn't be afraid of technology, we should manage it, and manage it so that uh, we both retain jobs and create new jobs, but also uh, ensure that the benefits of technology are fairly shared out. All the previous industrial revolutions, the one that brought in the steam age, the one that brought in steel, the ones that brought in higher technology, and mass transport and mass media have usually ended with a uh, redistribution of wealth in the wrong direction. I want the fourth industrial revolution to be very different, one that actually shares out the benefits of technology and looks at the creation of very high skilled jobs but also uses it as a way of investment in service industries, particularly caring services, particularly health and education. So we can actually all benefit from this. But if we just allow a free market to rip, then what will happen is many people that are currently not in particularly well-paid or very secure jobs will lose out and we'll end up with a residue of uh, quite high levels of unemployment on very poor working conditions for those who remain in work. We can do things differently, but it does require a very high level of intervention in the economy. The press and media have played a large part in the success of previous Prime Ministers. How do you deal with the press and media when it's openly hostile to you? Do you think the media is hostile to me? I think at times they can be, yes. I think so too, I agree. (laughs) Um, How we deal with it is by trying to get our message across in a different way. When we went into the general election a year ago, a year ago this month, the campaign began, we did three things. One is recognised we were getting a high degree of hostility from much of the mainstream media and despite the best efforts of a fantastic media team that wasn't likely to change. But we also recognised that the broadcasting rules kick in as soon as the election gets officially underway and there has to be an equality of time between the major parties and that helped quite a lot because it meant that we got equal access to news and broadcasts such as that. That helped a lot. We also recognised that social media is a massive means of communication to very many people. And we use social media a great deal. I have 1.8 million followers on my Twitter account. We have a similar number on Facebook. And the Labour Party has enormous numbers as well. At various points during the election campaign, 7 million people looked at our manifesto or parts of our policies online, unprecedented. And so we use social media as a means of reaching out as widely as we possibly could. And we also went for the other end of it, which is a very old-fashioned form of campaigning. It's called getting a megaphone and going out in the street. (laughs) And we did events all over the UK, from... Cornwall, right up to the north of Scotland. We just did events everywhere myself or people from the Shadow Cabinet or other people in support of Labour. So we had the effect of um, mass interest in the campaign because of the way we're doing it on the streets and we got across through the social media. And uh, we got 
a result which I wish had been even better, but we did get the biggest swing to Labour since 1945 and the biggest vote in England since 1970. And so we had a lot we could be very proud of, but we're not resting on our laurels at that because there's still a Tory government. As far as I'm concerned, we're not going to rest until we've got rid of the Tory government and we've got a government in that wants to redistribute wealth and power to the people rather than allow these grotesque levels of inequality to go on. Getting a message across means communicating with people, but it's also about campaigning. I'm not in favour of retail politics where you knock on a door, say to somebody, if you vote Labour, we'll give you this. No. I want people to vote Labour because they believe in the generality of what we're trying to do, the transformational politics we're doing, and that's where our manifesto put that message across. It's about mobilising people on campaigns, and so that is what we're doing. And today, my long discussions with very large groups of catering workers was the right way to do things. It taught me a lot. I hope it helped them a bit. But it taught us some of the details of legislation that we're going to have to bring in to protect their conditions. Final question. Why did you want to become a politician and what would you like to achieve before you stand down? Well, I never wanted to become a politician. It kind of happened, which is probably the best way, really. I did lots of jobs before I eventually was... um, asked to stand for a council election in the early 1970s and was elected to Harringay Council. And I got I was also a union organiser and got more and more involved and I was invited to put my name forward to be a candidate for Islington North for Labour and was elected in 1983. And, um, well, the rest is history, as they say. And uh, I didn't seek ever to become the leader of the Labour Party. I was asked to stand and agreed to do so. And... Uh, I was successful in that election because of the work of thousands of people in supporting that. What I want to achieve is a fairer, more decent society, one that's environmentally sustainable, one that doesn't walk by on the other side when people are rough sleeping and uh, their lives are so disfigured by their lack of anywhere to live. I wanted to live in a world where we actually are able to use our energies to bring about peace, to bring about change in the inequality in the planet. A quarter of the world's population are in food poverty, if not desperate levels of hunger. There are 65 million people across the planet who are refugees at the present time. I want to see a very, very different world. That's why we have to bring people together to achieve it and challenge the centres of power that defend the inequality under which we all suffer. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be on your programme. Thank you. It's the Stephen Rowan Show. It's Stephen Rowan. Stephen Rowan. Stephen Rowan. Stephen Rowan. Bringing you entertaining and inspiring guests. Bringing you entertaining and inspiring guests.